see all of the original layers. Um, and there's a bit of damage here, here under the window. These are from the Christiania nail factory. So that's right, that's all from around about 1900. Um, maybe even this tar paper is from that time. And then there's, you can see the, uh, the insulation, which is uh, sawdust. So we, w we won't uh, take that away actually, we'll leave that. And uh, this is the original panel, uh, panelling, which is, um, it has the uh, black fungus, Svatsop as it's called in Norwegian. Um, so that's had a few years, of, a few decades of weather before uh, being replaced or, you know, recovered maybe 40 years or something. Usually the damage is about a millimeter every 10 years. So uh, under the window, there's been this uh, damage in the woodwork, but to further out this uh, bottom, I'm not sure what they're called in English, Bumsvin, it's called the bottom uh, stock there. It's a, it's a kind of post, post beam construction. Again, I'm, I'm afraid I don't know the English terms for these things. It's called the uh, Bindingsvag Sus in Norwegian, Tung Bindingsvag. So, that makes sense. Look at the, uh, the way this bo these boards have been treated when they were put on just after the war sometime. Uh, they've been painted with used motor oil. This is clear because you can see where the liquid has stopped. Now this, the use of motor oil on was typical in that in that post-war period when some resources were tight. Uh, it's not a good thing to put on boards because it destroys the glue which holds the fibres together in the board, especially in conjunction with sunlight, which is one of the reasons why these boards are as uh, soft and have been had so much wear on them in such a short time. So. That's the little update. You can actually see the oil has gone through to the paper at the back there. The old walls had no treatment on them at all. That's just uh, that brown colour there is just caused by sunlight. It's actually a, it's actually a microorganism that causes the brown colour. And the same microorganism goes grey when it gets rainwater on it. People often confuse this for be having been treated with wood tar, which is a modern phenomena. Churches and boats are the only things that traditionally were used for that, certainly in the Middle Ages. So it's after the advent of museums that started treating houses with tree tar that we find tree tar on houses. Very, very expensive and unnecessary the house goes that colour anyway on its own. Okay, it's the same case here. Under the window, there's uh, insect damage. Beetles living in the high humidity. But, there's also crushed timber there without any damage. So I'll just take a, as, as little out as I can. Okay, the next thing will be uh, put back the stones that go under here. I'll make a couple of wedges to wedge under these uh, standing, there's a standing post. So I'll put a wedge under there to, to make that 
weight go up. Uh, you know, to pick up the the weight of the house there. And I think I put a corner bracket on this one as well to strengthen up that joint there because there's also a standing post here behind the boards. Um, after those are done, I'll put in some stones here to take the weight up. And then the strengthening, I mean, I'm not relying on these little joints here to give this thing the strength. What I'm relying on is the piece that's going to come on the outside here. I'm going to use a nice, uh, a nice board, a nice strong board there underneath the, um, the panel. And that will give this uh, whole piece of wall its strength, its lateral strength. So what I'm most interested in here is the vertical strength to de deliver the load from the roof down to the wall. And that's, uh, that, that will do that nicely. And uh, just to recap or, you know, to, to reiterate that uh, I'm not getting rid of all of the rot. There's still a little bit of rot in at the back where it's been have, had its very high humidity, but um, that can be dealt with from the inside when one, so if someone's going to change the floor at some point. Um, at present, it's not necessary, and you know, somewhere you have to put the stop. Otherwise, you make so much work for yourself, um, and it's, this is not the project here is not to completely renew. The building it's to stop and to make and also to make sure it's to stop the advance of any damage but it's also to make sure that the damage isn't critical in the first place which we found out really it isn't so uh, gives you an idea of my thought process and my reasoning behind making such a simple repair instead of shift changing the whole piece all the way along which would involve jacking up the house and taking down this little piece of uh, this extra roof here and I just don't think the customers really uh, interested in having that done. They're most interested in just knowing that they're keeping the, the house in good condition and, uh, and it won't, for, it won't um, deteriorate any further. I'm, I'm happy that that's being uh, satisfied with that need. So this house is built in around about 1900 and uh, we thought that perhaps this was the original board wall But it turns out that it's a second layer. There's underneath we found an original wall, which is also weather bitten. So what we've decided to do is leave that original wall that is from about 1900, and then do the same process that's been done here. I guess it's probably done around about in the 1950s. Uh, so we'll copy this panel and uh, cover it in the same way and then use the, the fibre insulation where the sawdust, if there's not enough sawdust in the walls, which is the original insulation, um, then we'll add whatever's needed to bring it back up to fully insulated. I mean it won't be like a modern insulation but it's good enough for this holiday house. Okay, around the window is insulated with flax. It's a little bit of rot damage at the bottom here. It's actually slightly uh, damp. Okay, the next repair is uh, this bit of wall that's bulging here. And that looks bad, doesn't it? It looks really bad, but it's actually not that bad. It's the same situation here as, uh, as everywhere else, isn't it? Water has been coming where this window. I actually found out yesterday that, the, uh, that while this house was empty, the windows were stolen. So uh, this house has had a few years without any windows at all, which is the reason why there's all this water in here. I mean, the, the, the rock damage from water. The water has just softened up the woodwork a little bit. High humidity. And uh, the insects love the high humidity. 
it's not actually rot, you see, it's all insect damage, all of that damage. So as soon as you get that relative humidity mm. down, uh, it stops, the, the insect attack stops. Unless it's um, something like uh, ants, they, uh, wood ants, they, um, they'll be barely anything. I don't know quite what the reason, what the, um, there's no kind of great rule about it. They'll eat all kinds of different wood, rotten wood, not rotten wood, good quality, low quality. There's no rule of thumb. So as on the other side of the house, I'm going to try and achieve the same um, result here. I'm going to try and pull this in a little bit, or pull them a little bit straighter to each, in relation to each other, and then um, I'll rely on a larger board at the bottom, which is called a vandret, a water board. It's the board that the uh, panels sit on top of, which leads the water away from the base of the, of the house. And that's my next job. Although I'm not sure, I'm not sure if it's such a good idea. It, it looks like the foundation actually has moved a little bit because here there's a, a dip in this direction, and then the whole lot moves out here, the whole corner. So I'm not confident actually that this will work. But I have an idea for doing it where I just um, drill through here and put on a large bolt, and then just bolt a larger piece on, and then drive wedges in to try and pull them together. That's what I'm going to attempt now. I've decided to improvise a couple of jacking points on the standing posts. I don't have any box, five inch box, so I'm just using successive planks which are screwed on and they will be strong enough to just lift up that corner, it won't be too heavy a few tons. This house isn't a very heavy house. So I just have to make a little foundation for the jack. And that's usually the problem that the jack sinks into the ground rather than the house goes up. I'm just putting on a sideboard to stop the flexible point there from jumping out when I jack it up. And I've put this in fast speed just so that you can see it going up a little bit easier. It's not, it doesn't go up very much, just a, a few centimetres. I'm just kind of letting the weight off the bottom plates, which have the original, well, they have a repair from the, sometime in the last 50, 40 or 50 years, which seems to have failed. This corner had visibly sunken slightly and so while jacking it up here I'm just cutting a few wedges to put underneath the bottom plate. I apologise that it's slightly out of shot. turned out that putting these wedges in also moved the bottom plate back in so the idea of using a dedicated repair technique for pulling the beam back in place wasn't necessary. I don't actually have footage of the, the second jacking point but there are a couple of stills that I'll show in a second or two, which uh, show how it looked before I carried on. I just closed the wall after after this. This literally was only a 10 or 15 minute job to get that back into position. And I then replaced, it, replaced the, uh, the part of timber that had been damaged by water underneath the window. before closing the wall again. 
the insulation we're going to use will be blown in so we don't it doesn't matter just close the wall we can drill holes and blow in the insulation later so the next part will be about the taking out the window 